Okay, so we're going to switch the viewpoint here so you can kind of see more closely what I'm doing. We're not here alone. I have my trusted companion, Tallulah, by my side as always. I highly recommend cats if you don't already have one. Um, I hope that everybody that's isolating at home alone has a cat to keep them company. So what I'm going to do is get rid of these cracks along the edge. I'm going to take some water from my cup and put the water all along the edge. And it's not just the water, again, that's creating the smoothness. It's mainly the pressure of your fingers and the smoothing process. Now you can see that right here, see how there's kind of a big crack and even it's a little bit lower right here. It's like the plane isn't level. You can take some extra wet clay. Now see how I always keep my extra clay with a bag over it to keep it wet. This only works if it's moist. Just take a little bit like that and kind of add it on and smooth it in. Now this only works if you completely smooth it all the way in so that the two pieces of clay become one. So I don't often recommend to my students to use the adding on technique because they have a tendency to not rub it in all the way and then it can just fall right off like when it dries anything that's not totally attached is gonna just fall right off so if it's sticking because it's moist it's not gonna keep doing that when it's dry unless you've made the two pieces one so I'm just gonna keep going around and smoothing and wetting and perfecting my piece and you can see that if you took the time to do some of that when you originally made your sphere it'll be a little bit easier and you can still do some pinching and perfecting the other thing you can do besides adding is almost the opposite it's like scraping away see I'm taking my fingernail and like scraping away and making it become one that way so you don't have to add anything now a lot of people express to me when they take this class that they would like to use the potter's wheel so that would be cool, but I always like to let them know that you can do all the same things um, with your hands that you can do with the wheel. And the wheel is not as easy as it looks. So it looks cool and easy and fun because the people who you see on film doing it are really, really good at it. So just like anything, if you're a really, really good surfer or skier, snowboarder you're gonna make it look easy I mean even Michael Jordan can make a slam dunk look easy because he's really good at it so it is very difficult actually um, you basically the hardest part is that you have to get your lump of clay perfectly centered so that means that the mass and the weight of it has to be perfectly in the middle of the circle. Otherwise, it'll start to wobble. And then as it starts to wobble, it will stretch itself and get more and more and more wobbly until it might even just um, come right off the wheel and fly across the room and hit the wall. So it's very messy. There's water everywhere. It takes about two years to get good enough at it 
that you can actually control what you're making and make exactly what you want and do it quickly. So although in the long run it becomes sort of a way of mass production, it takes a lot of practice to get to that point. And it's only one person per wheel, so it makes it difficult to have a whole class that way. But the other thing is that you're limited to what you can make with the wheel. You're basically limited to making pottery, um, type vessels, bowls and cups, things that are perfectly symmetrical. Um, whereas with hand building, you can make all that stuff and more. You can make a figure. A figure would be like a human or an animal sculpture. You can make a box. You could make stamps. Um, you can make just about anything you want. So if there is something in particular that you really want to make, um, you know, go ahead and look on the internet and look for ideas and let me know and I can make you a video with technique suggestions. So I'm going to give you very specific assignments in the beginning to teach you technique. And then once you have those techniques down, then you can apply them yourself to any kind of creative endeavor that you want to make. So I've got my pinch pot pretty well smooth. Now I might want to add a little texture or pattern to it. We're going to be working with texture and pattern in our next assignment, but we can go ahead and get started now. I have a clothespin and I'm just going to stamp the rim. Now, besides the added detail that the stamping can add, it also is going to allow a little spot for the glazes to pool and sink into, and it can also increase the interest that your glaze has. Now, I could take this little heart that I made before stamp push that in get a little heart shape now the most important step is going to be the last step which is to sign your name to the bottom so I want you to take a toothpick um, or your pencil, your pencil will work. Um, you, I have this wire tool that I told you was my favorite, but you can just take a, um, old paper clip and basically make the same exact thing. Um, and you're going to use that like a pencil to write your name in the bottom. Now I want you to write your full name. Um, I don't have your initials memorized and you would be surprised how many people do not sign the bottom of your, their pieces and then they can't remember which piece is theirs. So you think that you can never forget your piece, but you'd be surprised after waiting, you know, a few weeks to get it back from the kiln people don't remember and they say is this one mine and and if you can't remember then I can't remember and I really want to get your piece back to you so please sign your name and that is your first project the pinch pot I have enjoyed spending time with you today Kalula and I will be back soon with your second assignment. 
and we're going to do some slab work. So go find something that you can use as a rolling pin and I can't wait to see you soon. Bye bye.